Good morning, guys, and welcome to FYI. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wherever you guys are joining us from, we are happy. Happy Monday. Happy you guys are back with us. Happy you guys are here. Happy you guys have made it. We, we have made it to another week. How you folks are doing? Do let us know if our audio is loud and clear. We want feedback from you guys, but we don't want feedback from the audio. <laughs> Good to have you. Beatrice Selby, I see you there. You landed Thomas. And Debbie Collins and all you other beautiful folks out there. We are happy to have you guys with us. Share the live as soon as you come. Smash that emoji button. Debbie Collins and Yolanda Beatrice, you guys are our sound te technicians on the outside. Do let us know if you're hearing us loud and clear. Annette, Gwyneth, Beatrice, Sheila Boychild. Good morning to each and every one of you guys. We are happy. You folks are here. Good to have you. Lots of news and information, infotainment as well keeping you guys up to speed of what's been happening how many of you tuned into the oscars last night angela bassett's face expression uh, seemed to have taken uh, social media by storm um didn't win the uh, best supporting actress uh, that went to another actress uh, but we're happy that we're we we're, we're happy we're we're happy you know We've gotta move forward finel innes and all the other folks who are joining us we just gotta move forward so the oscars were on last night Debbie Collins says loud and clear. Anthony uh, Henry says, hail, bro, hail. Hail back to you, hail. <laughs> Debbie and uh, Pollyanna Schultz, good to have you. Petal Thorne, great to have you as well. Petal and Marilyn Lorimer, we are very, very happy that you guys are here with us. Uh, we are delighted, delighted to have you guys join us. Delighted, delighted to have you guys join us this morning. Um, really great to have each and every one of you. How are you guys doing? Audrey Milo, and I see Winston Granada is here. Winston, good morning. And Debbie says, loud and clear. Uh, very happy to, very happy to hear. Good, 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 good. Very happy to hear that you guys are hearing us loud and clear. Yep, yep. Annette Cummins. <laughs> Annette says, Angela didn't. <laughs> happy Monday, Pollyanna Schultz. Happy Monday to you. Uh, happy Monday to all the other guys who are, who are joining us. Leon Blair and uh, Fayan Ross. Warren Fig, <laughs> Warren Fig is Fig Tree, you know, fictitious Fig what? Warren Fig, Pinky Kerr. You know these people, parents give them a lot of, a, a, a lot of names. Warren Fig, <laughs> Pollyannish, Mr. Fig, welcome. Mr. Fig, welcome. Uh, Yolanda is here with us. And all of the other guys who are joining us. We're we happy that you guys are here. Sharon McPherson, we see you there. Good morning, Sharon. Welcome to this uh uh, this is what the third week we're heading into the third week yeah the third week of uh, march already 13 the 13th day of march the third week we're in uh heading to mid-month and i know lots of you counting down the clock more than more than i i don't complain anymore because i ain't gonna pay day till um till may since july last year you know they're trying to silence us by any means necessary <laughs> attacking our finances first and foremost but folks, like the tree planted by the rivers of living waters, we shall not be moved. I love what Donna says. So, so impactful. A marvelous Monday. Yep, you got to start the, you got to start the day on the high note. A marvelous, marvelous Monday. I great to have each and every one of you with us. A marvelous Monday. And just channeling what Donna Daly said. Uh, I see Hula's here. Hula Lafferman Rubens. All the, those guys who are joining us on Twitter. Uh, you're joining us on Facebook. You're joining us on the Tube. The Tubers, we're happy that you guys are here. Good to have each and every one of you. Lynn Fernandes, we see you. Lynn says a happy Monday to all the FYI family. Rhonda Spencer, Tom, good to see you, Rhonda. Where's Lane? Where's Rhonda Lane? Bernadette Duncan, family. Good to have you, Bernadette. And uh, uh, Norris uh, Francis, good to have you, Norris. Guys, how was your weekend? Lots happened over the weekend. Lots and lots happened over the weekend. You know, it's only because we need to rest and recuperate because, you know, we could have shows all weekend with the kind of content that's being produced out there. You know, lots and lots happened over the weekend. Valletta Bramel, good to see you. Valletta, Irwin Don, Cook from region number three. Good to have you, Irwin Don and Lola Greenwich. Good to have you too. And Elizabeth Sage, Elizabeth and Pamela, Pamela Halls, Keith, Kenneth, Dennis. Good to have you, Kenneth. All the folks who are joining us from the diaspora, guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Uh, the folks says murdering you Amsterdam. Yep, yep, yep. That too. That too. You know, no one is being spared. You know, no region is being spared. Lots happening in the ground here in Linden too. Lots happening in Linden. We're gonna circle, we're gonna circle to some of that. Lots and lots happening in Linden. Let's make sure that we have all our I's dotted, all our T's crossed at our end. Give us a second. We may have gotten a little excited uh, early on and perhaps left something undone. We don't want that at all, at all, at all. So let's make sure we have our eyes, our eyes uh, dotted. And the T's cross, folks, I'm really, really super happy to have all of you guys with, with us this morning. Really, really super, super happy to have each and every one of you with us this morning. Yep, good to see you folks. Great, great to see you folks. Pace, pace, pace and power. Pace and power, good folks. And we are delighted you here. Share the live as you guys are on with us. Smash that emoji button for us as well. And really, really great seeing each and every one of you. Really, really great seeing each and every one of you. We are happy and delighted that you folks are here with us. Happy, happy, happy and delighted. And I think we are... We, we are just about ready to get going and to, of course, of course, heading to the to the morning papers. Good to have each and every one of you with us, guys. Thanks for joining us. Share the like. Smash that emoji button for us. I see Kim Dickinson is here. June Cameron is here. June said, we outside. <laughs> Good to have you, June. And I see Erwin and Sheila Boychell has arrived. I saw your name getting called in the comment. I saw your name getting called. Kim and all the other guys, you know, good to have you guys on with us. And we are fired up, guys. We're ready to go, and we trust that you guys are as well. Good to have each and every one of you here. We first up, we head into the morning papers. You all know how we do it. Good to have you. Blonde. Uh, is it Blondies? Blondies, Barker. Good to have you. Is it Blondes or Blondies? <laughs> Good to have you. Shauna Fortune, we see you as well. And Simone Graves, Shauna, Kim, Irwin. Uh, good to have you folks on with us. Give us a share. Smash that emoji button, folks. And let's get to some of this information that we are covering this morning. Really, really great to see so many of you up and out so early. On the live, on the live. Good to have you guys on the live. <laughs> how, was the, how was the weekend, folks? Do let us know. How was the weekend at your end? Let me know. We fast. We fast. We want to. Carol Rollins, how was your weekend? Magnell Barrow. Magnell says, happy Monday. 37 degrees in the U.S. of A. Is that good for you, Magnell? Is that good or you wanting something better? Patricia Asana, good to have you guys. We are super happy to have each and every one of you who are joining us. I see uh, Robin Watts is here. Uh, Joy Hopkinson, Joy, good morning. Right back at you. Good morning to all the, the FYI family. Uh, whether you guys are joining us on Twitter, you're on the tube, you're joining us on YouTube, you're on Facebook, you're on LinkedIn, wherever you're picking up the broadcast from this morning, we are super, super happy that you guys are here. Shauna, I see you there. And, uh, and Alec Cummins, I, I almost said Auntie Cummins. Uh, same thing. Alec Cummins, um, yep. Uh, Alex, we're hungry for the news. We're hungry, we're hungry, we're hungry. Well, we're happy to assist in our own little way. We are happy to assist folks in our own uh, little country way. Well, last you heard that word. You know, in our own little country. <laughs> in our own little small way, guys. We're happy. Happy to assist. And first up, first up, let's have a go at it, guys. First up, look what we're covering. Look what's happening at uh, uh, somewhere close to you, you know. Uh, Rosie Ford says he welcomes this uh, new Institute of Action Against Discrimination. It was launched over the weekend. I think we carried, we carried some of it live on our Facebook page. Hope you guys got a chance to tune in. And I see, you know, the more, um, uh, we, the, the more organizations we have pulling in a particular direction, especially against the excesses of this installed regime, the better it is for all of us the better it is for all of us. It's only uh, uh, August to our benefit. And as I said when we were beginning the broadcast, there are so many efforts as we speak, as has been done in the past, uh, to silence uh, those of us who have a differing opinion uh, from the powers that be. Right? And then they go out there and they want to preach uh, democracy. They go out there and they want to preach good governance. Uh, Starbuck News had a pretty interesting editorial yesterday and this morning. They have a very, very, in two uh, very, very substantive editorials back to back. And we hope you guys get a chance uh, to read some of that. Starbuck News yesterday morning, um, and yesterday rather, and today 
they have two very good editorials. Um, and while I saw um, yesterday's editorial was denouncing um, some of the comments made by uh, Brother Ugunse um, from the WPA, uh, it did not disparage what he was denouncing. It did not disparage what he was denouncing. Um, and this evening, this evening we're going to have in the ring, uh, but brother um, Dr. Nigel Hines, not Nigel Hines, Dr. Uh, David Hines, rather, uh, from the an executive with the Working People's Alliance. We're going to have him in the ring tonight in that broadcast. So you're going to want to you're going to want to circle back there. Um, and again, 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 chronicling uh, discrimination uh, in this administration. And the point we were making is that we cannot have too many organizations doing that at all. So uh, like for I, I too, uh, welcome the Institute for Action Against Discrimination. And we're going to have some more of that uh, for you guys about that institute um, for your education, for your enlightenment, uh, for your general education, your political consciousness. We're going to have some more of that for you in a subsequent uh, a subsequent broadcast. But those are some of the things that went down over the weekend. And again, I say tune in tonight in the ring. We're going to be talking a little bit with Dr. David Hines um, on some of these uh, very, very issues. And you're going to want to, you're going to want to tune in for that, right? You're going to want to tune in for that. Uh, Shannon Smith Daniels, good to see you. Shannon says after a long time, she has tuned in. And Shannon, we want to wish you all the best uh, this new week. Whatever you're doing this week, Whatever you're doing this week, we want to say, um, and for all, for everybody watching us, you know, God's guidance, you know, we need God to direct our path in so many ways, you know. So God's guidance and Chanel and all the other folks who are tuned in and will tune in and come back and watch later and all of that, all of that. So again, um, for welcomes the Institute for Action Against Discrimination. That's what uh, that headline is saying there. Yep, yep, yep. We welcome that too. We welcome that too. Here's... Here's another headline that we're following, guys. Guys, sons, you all remember that? Accelerating paperwork for the Elmore joint venture. Remember they said they were closing down the Elmore packaging factory that, that billions of dollars went into Guyanese taxpayers' money to package sugar. And they said they were shipping the parts to some somewhere in region uh, 6, I think it was, uh, to continue that packaging operation. We don't even know how that is going. Right? But the joint venture... For this shipyard that was supposed to be occupying the space where the um, the space where the packaging plant was in the Moore, this shipyard to aid the oil and gas sector, the folks said they're still waiting. Geisons said they're still waiting on the paperwork. This is since last year. You understand the pedestrian pace. Roxanne and Robin and Valetta, Daphne, Aaron, uh, Craftville and uh, Janessa Marcus. You understand, you understand the pedestrian pace at which this, uh, this government operates. It's one for dollar. One for dollar. They made a big issue. Oh, major investment coming. But how would it go in? This is how it go in. You see, they show you how it starts. They don't show you how it's going. Here's how it's going. Guys, said they're still waiting for the paperwork. And they went on to say in the report, we're pulling this headline from that the investor is still active on the ground. Well, of course, they're going to see what they're going to see. But they're still waiting for the paperwork. How many jobs they said this was supposed to create? They like those things. Investment coming. Oh, 50 jobs, 100 jobs, 200 jobs. But the backstory is the project can lift up the ground yet. I'm sure this is probably close to two years. It's close to a year now. At least a year now. And the project ain't lift up the job yet. You see why you got to read the five prints? Paul and Matthias, uh, Tessa Isaacs, Graves Andy, you, under, you overstand? Uh, you overstand why we got to read the fine prints? Now the EPA, they know the able. The EPA know the able. The EPA is trying to convince us that Kaitre News is wrong. And Kaitre News has been uh, deliberate and repeated uh, in misleading the public. That's one headline we're seeing this morning. That's what the EPA would want us to uh, try to have an appreciation for. Never mind that's Guyanese. Each of us are, are, are seeing on a daily basis how the EPA you know, is being weakened. The EPA out here looking thin, thin, thin. Right? We see that. We've been chronicling here in our own small way all of the transgressions, all of the EIAs that they're waving, all of that is to our benefit. 
the environmental protection, um, the environmental impact assessments. Right? That's supposed to be a mainstay as part of safeguarding the public's interest, the environmental interest. But no, they've been waving. That seems to be the norm. To have the EIA, this standard in the industry, seem to be the abnormal thing. But they come out this morning abusing out Kaicho News. Kaicho News is misleading. What they can say about Kaicho News, uh, what they can say about us, <laughs> they've been misleading. And folks, we're going to have on our broadcast sometime during the week, Dr. Vincent Adams, the former head of the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, and he was head in good times. He was head in good times. Those were the good times when the EPA was really on the forefront of environmental protection. That is not so these days. That is not so these days at all. So the EPA ran out this morning. But folks, you and I have got to constantly be part of pushing back against their disinformation and information of the powers that be as well. You think the EPA just ran out? Or somebody tell them, you got to go, no, say something. <laughs> say something for yourself. Say something for yourself. Here's another headline that we're following, guys. Another headline that we are following. Appointments of overseas ambassador priority, according to uh, the Foreign Affairs Minister, Utah. You know, for those, and we, we talked about it just last week, for those who have gone before Utah, especially those who might be still with us, you can probably hear the suck in the teeth. You had giants in foreign affairs, Andre Alexander, Jolly Anderson, Colin McKenzie. We have had giants in foreign affairs. Uh, you know, Srinath Ramphal is one of them. When does it become a CARICOM, and a CARICOM, Commonwealth Secretary General, you know, very respected internationally, right? Amy dignified them with living here. He lives, uh, I think, in Barbados. Giants like that. Rashley Jackson, gone before us recently. Then you got people like Utah. And 31 months later, 31 months in, lots of the consulates and embassies still don't have a substantive ambassador, high commissioner. Again, again, this is the pedestrian nature in which they're operating. Right? You see, if you have all of these um, embassies and so on staff, you need you actually need a foreign policy. And it won't be the wild, wild west where you're, you're just shooting from the hip. Right? You have to have foreign policy and strategy and all of that. These fellas here, 31 months in. 31 months in. Right? They, you know, they can't they say, uh, walk and chew gum at the same time. They can't do that. And if you time would only spend some more time actually doing the work of a foreign affairs minister, we would be in a different spot. Sheila Boychel, we were there in a different spot. If only some more time. You never know. You try to run into the Democratic Republic of Linden. You run into the you know independent uh, um, Republic of Barbies and so on. That's what he's interested in. I don't know. He seems to be jostling uh, uh, Nigel Darrell for minister of local government. I don't know why they don't just give him and put somebody finally competent to manage foreign affairs. Uh, he said the, 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 the appointment is a priority. 31 months. Can be a, can be a priority. She looked by child. And 31 months later, 31 months later, nothing. How that going to be a priority? Even the folks who are supportive of the PPP who are watching us now, you won't deem that a priority. 31 months later, the thing can do. You can deem that priority. If you got an employee, an employee who said, oh, your work is a priority, and 31 months later, they are bust to move. You can say like Donald Trump, you're fired. You are fired. That's what you can say. But these chaps here, <laughs> These, these chaps, or as by uh, international um, law tutor used to say, you know, Duke Pollard, these cats, you see, these cats, 
They're different. They're different. And we're following this one, guys, out of Linden. They're telling us a popular contractor shot a police officer last evening in Linden. And that contractor is now critical. That police officer, rather, that police officer is now critical. And we saw one um, one news, uh, one one uh, entity there in, in Linden uh, was reporting that this, this individual was, was shot in his head. That's what they're reporting. This, in, this individual who was shot was shot in his head. That is what that report was telling us. And uh, 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 I want to say um, thanks to uh, Lester Glenn for this footage here. Thanks for this footage. But one again, one of the one of the persons on the ground was telling us, or one one of our sources of information, right? That a businessman walked up to his cousin and shot him in the head. That was the initial report that we got. Now, all of this is unconfirmed, the family relationship. Right? The family relationship is unconfirmed. What we do know is that one man walked into another and shot him. Some folks are saying that that was done in his head. He was shot in his head. That's what one report telling us. And this is some of the uh, footage some of the footage that came out of Linden last evening. Some of that footage. And that is what some of what we're following on the ground there. Some of what we're following on, on the ground. Uh, Linden has been in the has been in the has been in the news all, all we can. All we can. Linden has been in the news, and we're gonna circle back to uh, some of what we're picking up there. All of Linden, some of what is happening on the ground. Why don't we turn our attention to some of the stuff that are uh, brewing internationally, uh, regionally, and then we're going to circle back to some of the other issues that are happening locally. We're going to circle back to some of that. We turn our attention to what's happening internationally. Guys, what are you guys having for breakfast? I got some coffee here. I got to take a sip on before it gets too cold. But what are you guys having for breakfast at your end? Do let us know. And of course, and things we're covering. Uh, this uh, war in the Ukraine, uh, the, you know, the Russian forces are hard at it. Uh, that's some of what we're covering this morning. But as we get into that, do let us know what you guys are having for breakfast at your end. Got a big cup of coffee here. Mm -hmm. And the uh, air conditioner fighting it. I don't think the coffee is going to win. The Air conditioner is fighting that. Don't think the the um don't think that the coffee is gonna win. Gilali Cop, we see you there, and Yolanda, Anthony Nicholson, Rhonda Gordon, Loretta, and all the other folks joining us, guys. We are so privileged that you guys are on with us this morning. Don Bain, Spurrily, as you come on, guys, share the live, smash that emoji button for us, and let's have a go in the day. Telling us that the war in Ukraine, you know, back both has been the place uh, of heavy fighting of recent and the international reports telling us you got a lot, a lot, a lot of casualties that are coming out now of Bakhmut. And so, you know, we got to pray for our brothers and sisters. They, I thought uh, China had a plan, a peace plan. You know, our, our very own uh, Professor Shamir Ali, who follows up on these international relations issues for us, former ambassador to, the, to Kuwait, uh, says that even Russia... I think last month he told us that, and we look forward to his um, his his piece this evening and tonight's broad, broad, broadcast. We know what he's going to be focusing on tonight, but the back channels, you know, Dr. Shamir Ali always has the back channels for us. He said even Russia at one point had a peace plan that was, wasn't given much credence, and then its international partner, China, came out recently and put forward its peace plan. Well, I don't know if this is what peace, look, peace looks like, but they say, he's saying that heavy losses are reported as the battle for Bakhmut rages. And of course, I thought some, somewhere along the line, you know, with the creation of all these international organizations, they said after World War I, it will not happen again. Two, we will not let things escalate.
to this level. And now we have the war in Ukraine right on Europe's doorsteps. You know, they like to put the face in a lot of other people's business. But it's right there now. Could we solve this already? You know, and let peace reign. Could we solve this already? Losses, heavy losses, they say. On all sides. Heavy, 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 heavy losses. We want to pray for our brothers and sisters who are involved in this conflict on both sides. So that peace might prevail. We will mingle Garraway and Miguel King. Yep. We will such a tide of war. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Could you imagine living somewhere like that? You don't know if you're going to wake up to see the next day. Well, we ain't too far off here. If you're talking about if you're going to live, if you're going to wake up to see the next day. We got a war of a different sort. A war of a different sort. With international organizations. Reuters is telling us it rages on. The fighting is hot. Heavy losses in Bakhmut. We're going to stay on top of that, folks. We're going to stay on top of that. Look at us we're following this morning. Look at us we're following. Mexico has got some real problems on its hands. You know, some folks were apprehended uh, recently, were kidnapped in Mexico. Uh, two ended up being killed. And then the cartel came out and said, was mistaken identity and apologized. Yeah. Yep. Believe it or not. The cartel came out and apologized. So it was mistaken identity. The two persons, uh, two persons are still in captivity uh, from that episode uh, of kidnappings. Two persons lost their lives, tragically. Mexico, and so uh, this kind of headline don't strike us, you know. Uh, just over the weekend, uh, we were looking at a, a documentary um, in one of those border uh, towns with the, with the United States. And one of the things they're trying to do is stem the traffic of, drug, of, of, of drugs going into the U.S. And of course, associated with that is a lot of violence. And so when we saw this headline, Mexico too dangerous for spring break, you know, the um, young people from the U.S., you know, when they get the recess from school, go to vacation and have a nice time, you know, put on the books a little bit. That's their spring. That's what they call spring spring break. And most of them go to Mexico. And now they're saying it's too dangerous for spring break. Yep. And I, I know left night that's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt those folks. Um, I, I can't remember the the, 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 the chung off the top of my head, but those of you who understand the geography of this area, um, that chung that borders uh, the US layer, very, very popular. Very, it's a lot of tourists go there, they look. They look and depend on that tourist dollar. But alas, folks, alas, is what we have. This is what we have. Too dangerous, the authorities in Texas say. Too dangerous for spring break. Yep. Yep. Hope they're able to stem that tide of, um, of cocaine across the border. We got to do the same. We got to do the same. Because the amount of cocaine that's circulating here. And you all know since the year start, we've been documenting a lot of, you know, selling cocaine and, uh, and marijuana, ganja, seem to be like the most sought after side hustle. It used to be dog food, but now cocaine and ganja, every day you see it in the news, housewife, sitting tight, she's trying to make a little extra dollar, cocaine, marijuana. Yep. Uh, yep. Look, some of the information, guys, we're picking up regionally. Some of that information we are picking up regionally. You think it's easy in some places? <laughs> we will have you guys know. It is not, it is not by any measure. It is, it is not easy. So look, we're picking up regionally. Regionally. And in particular, some of what we're picking up in Trinidad. We told you last week that the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago. And Dr. Keith Rowley had a, uh, some words for the Director of Public Prosecution, Roger Gaspard. He had some words for him last week. And that's some of what we're picking up on, including some words for the, for the opposition. Uh, he had some words for the opposition as well. And the opposition, of course, I didn't take that too lightly. They say PM Rowley has gone, has gone rogue. Right? He, he has gone rogue. And they went as far 
as uh, labeling, uh, this is um, opposition MP, Dr. Rodal Murilal. They went as far as labeling some of what he said as hate speech. You know, <laughs> I, I, I can see uh, Dr. Keith Rowley saying, well, the truth hurts. The truth hurts. They've labeled some of what he said hate speech. As he went after the opposition and took aim at uh, opposition leader and former prime minister, uh, Kamala Prasad Bisesa. Uh, remember, we spoke to about accusations that are being traded, uh, being traded about human trafficking, among other things. Among other things. Well, here comes this now. It says he got rogue, and some of what he said is hate speech. You know, as he reeled into them over the weekend. Yep, 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 yep. Rogue, gone rogue. <laughs> we can keep. We we'll keep following that, good folks. We're going to keep following. Look at us be following in the region, guys. Look at what us be following in the region. This is Belize. This is Belize. All right? And Belize at the crossroad where sugar production is concerned. All right? Government is rushing in, you know. Government is not rushing in. You know, they say fools rush in. We're, we're eagles there. Or we're angels there. Fools. Fools rush in. Right? And the government is attacking this in two fronts. They put in place a commission to deal with uh, a, the, the, a prolonged issue they've had with, re with remuneration for the caneros, is what they call the cane workers. They put a commission in, in place to look at that wage issue. Um, and, you know, so that is one of the things they're looking at. And then another issue that they're looking at is the future of sugar. The future of sugar. Right? You see, they don't have oil and gas to be throwing money you know, trying to prop up an industry for political purposes. So they have put a commission in place to look at the issue separately. Two different bodies they've put in place to look at the issues separately. They don't have time to be throwing money down a black hole. And so they are doing what you think intelligent people, you know, people who, people who actually care might do, you know, which is interesting, which is very, very, very interesting to say the least. Tremendously interesting, right? You see, that's how people who actually got care and concern, right, are doing. And... Again, not just trying to prop up a sector, you know, for any political purpose. Not trying to prop up the sector by any means. I'm, I'm trying to find, apologies, I'm trying to find my way in my notes. Because there's a particular section I think is very, very interesting and useful as we, as we share in information. Right. Very, very telling and useful. As we share information, again, they're not going to just prop up the, the industry for the sake of doing so. Right? I, I, I can see a nation like this says, we want value for money. That's going to be very, very high on the agenda. And they're setting up a commission of inquiry and a, mis a ministerial subcommittee. Right? And here's one of the things that the um, the subcommittee is going to be looking at. Give me a second, because it's very, very useful. They're going to be looking at um, at the fields, the planting, the production, the cutting of sugar, uh, the transport, um, the, the the whole value chain. They said, and the future of sugar. Right? They said they are working on solutions to productivity in the fields. Producing more sugar, right? Producing more sugar on less available land. And all of the surrounding issues concerning the viability of sugar. So, Belize is nothing this with blindfolds on. Belize is not here with blindfolds on. And I thought that was tremendously useful. Tremendously useful. That's what the Prime Minister Johnny. Brasseno is saying concerning 
Sugar. They try to make sugar sweet again. That's their their language. <laughs> they try to make sugar sweet again. Again, while they want to keep people employed and for the industry to be viable, they're making a study of it. I find it interesting that when uh, the administration came in in uh, 2020, one of the first things Zulfikar Mustafa said is that they're going to study this issue and allow that to guide them. Right? Well, nothing can guide them and there is no study. So the Belizeans are doing it different. They got a commission of inquiry looking at the wage issue. But we're looking at the viability, and then you've got the subcommittee, ministerial subcommittee, that focusing on the wage issue, yeah? Or vice versa, but there's still two different independent bodies that are put together to look at this issue. One, the wage, and the other, sugar's viability. We ain't got nothing. All we got is women fancies. Women and fancies. That's what we have operating. That is what we have operating. And we turn our attention now to some of the issues that are brewing in the 592, folks. Some of the issues that are brewing in the 592. That's what we turn our attention to. Good to have you guys on the live. I see we have Gomati uh, Sicharan. Good morning, Gomati and Andrew Brach. Good to have you, June Cameron, Rhonda Gordon, Waveney Doris, Ram Singh Singh. Good to have you on the live as well. Ram Singh Singh, and then you got Ram Singh. All the Ram Singhs on the live this morning. But well, we welcome each and every one of you. And guys, we often say here, you don't have to uh, share the same views we share, you know. Right? We, you don't have to share the same views. You don't. If all of us, you know, think we should cook okra every day, uh -uh, uh -uh, you could have a different view. All are welcome. That's what democracy is about. You can have a different view. Kudos to you. You can hold a different view. Right? We don't have to agree all the time. On some issues, we can say we can park this one. We disagree. Right? And we can agree on something else and move along. We don't always have to agree on the same things. That's the point I'm making. We don't always have to agree. Look at some of the stuff we're tracking, guys, in the 592. Some of the information, some of the news we are tracking in the 592. And they're telling us some representatives of the U.S. Vice President is going to be visiting. We're getting visitors. So you're going to see a lot of things now being swept under the carpet. You all know how we do it. When Uncle Willie coming, we're going to have a nice time. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> sure, yeah, some uh, some uh, some representatives of the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris are going to be visiting Guyana for a little bit, and her advisor, on her uh, special advisor, for one, is going to be here. Here's some of the other information we're picking up, guys. On 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 this one, they're telling us uh, that uh, special advisor. For the Western Hemisphere, Joseph Salazar, and Deputy Director of the Western Hemisphere uh, Affairs, Western Hemisphere Affairs, uh, Michael Taylor, they will be visiting from the 12th to the 14th of March, which is, um, which is from yesterday. So they're here already. They're here already from yesterday on to the 14th. They are going to be here. And here's what we're going to be focusing on. They're going to be meeting with uh, a delegation um, from, of government officials leaders and non-governmental organizations um, and they're going to be focusing on the issues such as governance we got to spend a little time there i take all the time they're here governance security uh -huh. governance security and prosperity all right you remember the vice president had said in a statement when they visited when they were summoned to washington last year that prosperity must be for all guyanese not just for some and again, this is a very, very strong signal that Americans are very serious about this. Prosperity must be for all Guyanese and not just some. Not just some at all. That's one of the issues that we're following, guys. One of the issues we're following. 
must not just be for some, right? but for all Guyanese. Yeah, that's difficult for them boys to swallow. Very difficult. Look what else we're following. Now, this is very, very concerning. There's been no sighting of the driver, nor bulldozer, that reports say um, toppled off of a hill, a cliff, they said. Right. Bulldozer or driver, there have been no sign of them. And they've been searching and searching and searching. And last evening, last evening, uh, the search was called off. Uh, some folks said much too early, much too early. And of course, you had a lot, a lot of tension running high on the ground there in Linden. So we had that shooting we covered early on. And now this, this tensions were running very, very high in Linden as that search was called off. And again, folks on the ground said much, much too early. And this is um, the, the operator has been identified as Neptune Hercules. Neptune Hercules. And the folks are calling on the um, calling on the company both sides to do more in terms of searching, putting more resources into searching for uh, Neptune Hercules. I mean, the folks in mining might have a different view, of course, but a bulldozer and a driver disappear. It makes you wonder how deep is uh, you know. The bulldozer and the driver, there's just no, no sighting of them. And as, as every hour goes by, it moves from rescue into the phase of just recovery. Just recovery. Uh, last evening on the ground there, uh, there was a protest. Again, we said that persons are pushing, are trying to push the company to do more. It's a, it's, a, it's, a pity, it's a pity you have to do that. You've got to push the company to do more. And on the ground with those protesters in uh, Region 10, in Linden, was MP German Figuera. And here is some of what we picked up. Right? Some of what we picked up. What was happening on the ground there in Linden as regards to the missing uh, operator of, the, of this machine, a Neptune, a missing, uh, Neptune Hercules, and the protesters on the ground asking for both sides to do more. Um, with them was MP German Figuera. And this is some of what we picked up. So apparently the protests, the, the search rather for the buried worker stopped around 6 p.m. this afternoon. And the protesters were informed that the search is going to be continuous. It's going to be continuous until they discover the body. But we were told moments ago that while we were out here, while we accommodated the Bosai bus to take the workers in to relieve the search team, we were told, Apparently, we were lied to because the search stopped and the protesters stopped the truck from entering the Bosai compound. Having heard what would have transpired, having been deceived by some of these workers at Bosai. So, people are very angry with what they would have discovered. It's amazing that this search ended since six. It's disappointing. I can't believe this search ended at six. And Jepsy Cup of Light and Allen Ignorance. So the protesters are still out here, disappointed. 
disappointed that they were misled to. They were misled, they were lied to, they were misinformed deliberately. This is his aunt, tear up his aunt who is broken down emotionally, having heard that the search team ended their efforts around six this afternoon. Very sad situation. Very sad situation. Very sad situation. <laughs> 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 So apparently the protests Our thoughts and our prayers go out to the uh, friends and family of course of Neptune Hercules and we hope that search continues we can only hope folks that that search continues yep we're going to continue on that front folks apologies here's some additional information that we're following I'm trying to get my position back <laughs> here's some additional information that we follow thoughts and prayers go to the friends family and loved ones of neptune hercules as uh, and again we hope uh, like the person on the ground there that that search uh, continues uh, they're telling us that over the weekend gunmen posing as oil workers Rob customers at Cambo restaurant, Cambo restaurant on Sheriff Street. Is a daringness for us. We saw just last week, Minister of uh, Home Affairs. He's overseas on a conference to do with the natural resource sector. So I don't know if he has his eyes set on that portfolio. But here on that front, and as we chronicle all the time, crime is spiraling. Now it's, it's out of control. And it's the daringness with which these folks are going after victims. Reports that they were, the bandits were posing as oil workers. You think you understand what's happening here? Posing as oil workers. Can you imagine that? Stacey and Stoll, Naomi Drucker, that's what we do, you know. No, I got to think twice because Cambo's somewhere stopping every now and again. There's like a decent fire rights. Posing as oil workers. So nothing is safe anymore. Nothing is sacred. Nothing is sacred. Not even the Chinese fire that we love so much. Posing as oil workers. You know, the deliberation. One would suspect they were dressed in the garb of oil workers. That is where we are, sadly. And again, it's the pedestrian nature of the government for us on this issue. I have seen even PVP supporters saying that Robson should go. That there's no seriousness in crime fighting with Robson there. Right? But you know, the other side of it is criminals can hunt criminals. 
That's the other side of it. Can't put cats cat for watch milk. That's the other side of it. Who vex vex? Can't put cat to watch milk. That's the other side of that. Dressed as oil workers and robbed customers there, the bandits. Yeah. It's the ingenuity for us. You don't see them boys put their mind to positive things. They can make a difference. Move away from crime, man. Move away from that. And let our citizens live in peace. In spite of the government. In spite of the government. Well, talking about the government. Look, look at the end. <laughs> Folks, if an ant runs across the road, you know, that's the problem that causes blackout. See, if a cow marsh doesn't blade the grass, it's done. Now we're seeing here Phillips rubber stamp. He ran out. Increased vehicular, increased vehicles, increasing vehicles slamming utility poles. He says the main reason for increasing blackouts. Right? That's the main reason. And we've seen an upsurge. It's ours now. When they get blackout, one hour, two hours, three hours, blackout. Blackout in your skin. Yeah? That's how it's going down. He says vehicles hitting poles. That's the cause. At least, at least they move from the, the animals used to be a rat. Show the wire. It's vehicles hitting pole. You don't know. Some no name street off road. You knock a pole. That's the main, that's the main pole. You know that. Every pole is a main pole. The threatens to shut down the whole system. The whole system. That's a travesty. Right? That's a travesty. God forbid. God forbid. You know? One pole you could not and take over the city. You take out the power. One pole. You see? That's what easy it is. He said the increase slamming into utility poles. That's the reason. It's an indictment on them because the other side of that is increasing accidents. So clearly, the policy is concerned with usage and mitigating that is not working. But that's what Phillips run out Commissioner Cole, Samoa Williams, right? See, polls. Knock a poll. Shut down the city for five hours. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? Who knew? Lyndon again. Lyndon was killed at Long Creek. As he lost control of his vehicle, Darren Henry, and crashed. Lost his life there, they tell us, at Long Creek. And this uh, accident is still under investigation. Thankfully, he didn't hit any poles there. Right? But Darren Henry, for the one, an occupant in his vehicle was Shinika a Campaign, born of Linden. They said it's alleged he was speeding uh, when he lost control at Long Creek and crashed. Darren Henry of Linden. And again, our thoughts and prayers go out to the community of Linden. They've had to deal with so much over the last weekend, the last week. And we're coming out of MASH, and you know all that transpired there. So our thoughts and prayers, yet again, go out to the community at Linden. And Darren, Darren Henry's 
our friends, his family, and his loved ones as well, our hearts, our thoughts, and our prayers. How about you guys? Yeah, 41, gone so young. Gone so young. And we can keep on top of that. They said that those investigations are still ongoing. And I see Commissioner Cole saying too much speeding on the roads. That's why we say slow down, slow down, slow down, and let me arrive alive. New Amsterdam, Kevin Jr. Small is now dead after being chopped to death. They're telling us over phone, issue, Angoy's Avenue, New Amsterdam, over the street concerning a phone. Chopped to death. New Amsterdam there. Over first minister overseas. Doing his own thing. Doing his own thing. Right? They said this argument uh, escalated into a fight. Right? An argument that escalated into a fight. And then it's death. That's it. And one report says. You know, this was concerning a phone, this dispute here. And another young person is gone, just like that. Just like that. Just like that. You see, the whole program, we can say thoughts and prayers to the family, friends, and loved ones. Because that's the kind of society in which we live in. You got to search for the good news, few and far in between. It's few and far in between. You got to search for it. You know? There you have it. Kurukuru man shot dead in his home. Now the headline that screams at us this morning. Right? And clearly, nobody's concerned with penalty as a restraint. So people just acting with impunity. Brian Thomas, a black maker from Kurukuru is now dead. Right? It's now dead. In this particular case, we heard that Thomas made a complaint to the police that his life was threatened. And a day later, the reports tell us, and according to police reports, Thomas' ex-wife went to the Kurukuru police outpost on Monday last and filed a report that he threatened to chop her up and kill her. And as a result, Thomas was arrested and placed in custody at the highway patrol base pending for investigation. However, Thomas was released from custody, they tell us, the following day, and upon arrival at his home, he observed that the front door was open and the house was, rans was ransacked. Thomas subsequently reported a break-in at the Kuruku police outpost and related that his ex-wife wanted to kill him for his house and land. That was the report the police said he made. Right? Yep. And then a 30-year-old female of Sue's like they say, went to the Chimeri police station where she reported that earlier that evening, Wednesday of last week, she went to Thomas' home to pay for a quantity of blocks which she had ordered. The woman told the police that while standing at the bottom of the stairs, conversing with Brian Thomas, two unidentified men, one of them sporting a large puffy hair, rushed past her from behind and went upstairs, charging towards Thomas, who was standing at the top of the stairs. According to the woman, she heard one of the perpetrators telling Tommy, I pass me. The woman immediately ran out of the yard. Ran out of the yard. Right? I went to the Chumari police station and reported the incident. When the police arrived at the scene, Thomas was seen lying motionless face down 
in the doorway of the second bedroom. A reddish substance uh, suspected to be that of blood was observed on his right side of his abdomen. Checks were made for anything of evidential value and two 9mm spent shells were found on the kitchen floor. Yeah. That's the report. Home Affairs Minister and Foreign Conference, you know, and natural resources, because everything locked down tight at home. What a waste. What a waste. What a waste. What an absolute waste. The truth hurts. The truth hurts. At a public meeting over the weekend, thoughts and prayers about to Mr. Thomas' friends, family, and loved ones. So the Minister of Home Affairs, he grew up trotting on issues that have nothing to do with home affairs. He's grew up trotting. And sites are turned to the Commissioner of Police acting, Clifton Higgins, who the leader of the opposition and leader of the PNCR says, should not become the substantive Commissioner of Police. Should not become and in that public meeting, I think it's Ben and Hardine Street over the weekend, the leader of the opposition was addressing issues of discrimination locally while focusing on why Hickens should not become the substantive commissioner of police. Should not hear some of what the leader of the opposition, the leader of the PNCR, said at that meeting. Racial problems. Why we would have wanted, we will not sit down and allow them to run roughshod over us. Okay. I feel good this evening that I saw our supporters, the chairs, and sitting, and we can convince that our people are with us. I want to start with the Ayala Police Force. I've already made it very clear that in my opinion, Hicken is a political puppet who should never be confirmed as commissioner of police. Apart from the fact that he lacks the qualifications, he should never be. I remind people he was commander when they murdered three Linden people. But I want to caution you do not believe all policemen are the same. Many of the policemen don't agree with them. But we have to do the mobilization and organization, support them against the People's Progressive Party. The People's Progressive Party is using the police as a political tool. Throughout the history of this country, when the president is going somewhere, it is the commander in the region that goes, suddenly hitting like a little flip-flop following all behind the president. He is a politician. He is not a commissioner of police. And he must recognize he is destroying law enforcement in this country. Because people will never ever see him as being independent and willing to apply the law. And it is because of the actions of people like Hickin, the police believe and the government believe that they can abuse our people. We will end it. My friends, the police is so partisan this day that you could have a crime going and they take an hour to come. But soon as one of the PPP big businessmen call to say there is noise nuisance, they're there. They're proper. They're ready, hands outstretched. A corrupt set of people. And so, 
We have to be focused. The aim is to dominate and control our society. We will not allow that. Many times they are going around saying the APN UFC did nothing for the people. Well, we will say to them, we did a lot. For sure, the police enforced the law under us. For sure, the police solved crimes under us because we trained them to solve crime. For sure, people say, felt safer under us. But we are back to a place where lawlessness is the order of the day, thanks to the People's Progressive Party incompetence. My friends, they don't like when you tell them about the racism. You know, the truth hurts. But this government has proven to be extremely racist in its approach. There you have it. There you have it, folks. I can't add to that. I can't add to it. It's a question people ask all the time. Why is the commissioner of police foot to foot behind Irvin Ali? Like he's the, you know, the Ian Atashi or something like that to Irvin Ali. Maybe that's why you see crime doing what crime doing because people distracted. You know, if Ali becomes the most protected person you got, the most protected person, and the rest of us, what comes to do? We expose to them boys posing as oil company workers, oil workers, and so on. And we expose to the vagaries of the of life. And them boys. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to do it for us this morning, guys. That's going to do it for us this morning. Please and thank you. Uh, we will have you know as we go. Before we go, if you're looking for a, a, a good, somebody who understands what they're doing, Commissioner Votes to Afi Davids, guys, we recommend the Alistair Collins Forum. As a Commissioner Votes to Afi Davids and a Justice of the Peace, Alistair Collins provides expert guidance and support for all your documentation needs. They are open Monday through Saturday. I love this about this company. They open Monday to Saturday at the Kalyan Mall on Lamaha Street between Camp and Waterloo Streets. 649-6410-685-6448. The numbers are there. Expert guidance. I use them. Two facts lose. <laughs> I use them as well. So I'm just telling you what things I know about. They know what up to. Kalyan Mall there on Lamaha Street between Camp and Waterloo Streets. Yep. And I want to encourage you guys as well to partner with us. This is how we keep these programs going and keep bringing you valid and credible information. You ain't going to see this in NCN, you know. You ain't going to see this in Chronicle. You ain't going to see it in the PI. Valid, credible information. And here's how you can contribute to our programs, folks. We're available via Cash App, via Zelle, via PayPal, MoneyGram, Western Union. If you need some more information and guidance, 627-6963. 627-6963. And I want to thank all you folks for coming by this morning, folks, and stopping by our morning show. For your information, FYI, stay in the know. Give us a share, guys. That's going to do it for us today. That's going to do it for us. Maxine Monroe, good to see you. Candy, Nalene, Indajit, Donna, uh, McDonald, Valetta, good to have each and every one of you here. Carmen Bailey, good to see you as well. Smash that emoji button before you. Come on, folks, come on. Pick up the pace with the shares. Smash that emoji button before you go as well, guys. It was great having each and every one of you. We're going to see you guys back on our other programs for the day, guys. We got the podcast, and then, and then, then. Folks, you're going to want to be in the ring tonight. We got lots of information to share with you. You are going to want to be in the ring tonight. You're not going to be disappointed. You are not going to be disappointed. It's Monday. It's going to be Monday night, fight night, another night. You're going to want to be in the ring this evening. Thanks for joining us and stay safe, guys. Stay safe.